And today's video has very kindly been sponsored by Serious Readers and I will tell you all about their Serious Lights range later on. Hello and welcome to this video, which is a very special video because we are joined by my dad today. Say hello dad. Hi there. <laughs> So today's video is super exciting because you're going to learn how to make a quilt, aren't you, Dad? Yep. <laughs> and you've never made one before, have you? I haven't, no. And do you know much about quilts? Uh, I've seen them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, I think we've got a couple upstairs, yeah. Mm-hmm. Who made those? You. <laughs> yeah, they're not very good ones. They're from a long time ago. Um, yeah, but why do you want to make a quilt? Um, well, it's just another craft mm. and I'd like to learn a little bit more about using the sewing machine and that. Yeah. And uh, having a project makes you do something doesn't it? It yeah. does, yeah. it does, it keeps you busy. Keeps me busy, yeah. Yeah. So you quite like crafts don't you? Yeah, up to, up to a point. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done quite a lot of different crafts and you're working on what at the moment? Oh the cross stitch, I'm trying to learn how to do cross stitch. I think you're doing a good job. I think it's lovely. You've been working on that for a couple of weeks, haven't you? I, I thought I'd get it all done in a day. <laughs> <laughs> and a day turned into a week and a week turned into, well, st I'm still on it. <laughs> <laughs> but you've done a, a few different things. So cross stitch, you've done crochet years ago. Yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you done knitting before? Uh, knitting, yeah, I've done knitting. I'm quite good at this yet. I decided to crochet one one weekend. This is about thirty odd years ago, and uh, the whole weekend I made a berry. Oh wow! Well. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And have you done much on the sewing machine? A, a little bit, not, not a great deal, you know. I made that in. Um, oh, let's show everybody. During lockdown, when we were in lockdown, you know. So some of you might recognise this pattern, this design. It is the hexagon storage basket, one of my patterns. So yeah, you made this, it was in the first lockdown. It was it was quite early on, yeah. I remember. And um, it was that weird time when we weren't allowed within two metres of each other and we weren't allowed in each other's gardens. And I remember coming around and dropping off some fabric and I think the foam and just leaving it on the grass verge outside of the garden because <laughs> we weren't allowed to go near each other. The other side of the fence. And you did really well with this. I mean, you can see he's, he's done the EPP hexagons. He's got his initials embroidered on it. You did you did a great job of it. You tested my pattern for me. And, whoop, and you use it. <laughs> see, he's got all of his cross-stitch stuff in it. So Bits and yeah. pieces, yeah. So have you got any questions about about how quilting works, or how patchwork works, things you want to know before we get started. Well, is there a difference between patchwork and quilt, or is it just a, is it a quilt just a load of patchwork? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Well, patchwork is putting together, piecing together all of the different shapes to make a top, a, a quilt top. And the actual quilt is layering that quilt top, that patchwork top, up with wadding in the middle and then a backing fabric right. and and then the, the quilting is the stitches that hold those layers together. Hold it together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it should be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's not too big, just something small. Yeah, I think for a beginner, for someone who's new to it, making something small is a, is a good idea. Yeah. But I think we need some inspiration, don't we? Yeah, we do. So how about we go and have a look at some quilts then? Where? Let's go to Southport. To Southport? Yeah. Let's go and have a look. There's a quilt exhibition in Southport. Let's go and have a look and see if we can get some ideas. Where, where about in Southport? It's at the Atkinson. Oh, right. In, in yeah. the um, gallery there. Yeah, it's okay there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so let's go and have a look.
So this exhibition was really interesting. It was really an exhibition of two halves. Half of it were artworks created by two artists who used the antique quilts in the other half of the exhibition as inspiration. So they've painted these geometric designs, which actually look quite modern to me. And they've used the antique quilts from Gawthorpe Hall as inspiration for their artworks. So it was really interesting to see the two together. He hasn't even ironed flat the joints. <laughs> it was a great exhibition and a really good way of showing Dad the different types of quilts and the different designs that you can create. It was nice to compare the EPP quilts with the traditionally pieced ones and also to look at what were quilts and what were coverlets and it was nice to see him start to think about how things are constructed and he is starting to think like a quilter so that was really lovely. So before we find out what Dad's thoughts of the exhibition are and also what his plans are for what he wants to make, I'd like to tell you about the sponsor of today's video which is Serious Readers. Serious Readers are a UK company that make a wonderful range of serious lights and I have the high definition model. In fact I've had my high definition light for over two years now and that's how long I've been working with Serious Readers for. I absolutely love my high definition light and I just can't sew without it. There are quite a few things that make the Serious Lights really special. First of all there's the daylight wavelength technology and what that does is it gives off a light that replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as technically possible. Now this creates such a lovely gentle light that really helps to reduce eye strain but also allows you to see the colour of your fabric and your threads exactly as it would be in natural light which makes colour matching really easy. It just makes the whole feel of working with this light really comfortable on the eyes. I really enjoy how you can brighten and dim the light which means that you can create the perfect light environment. So I use mine in the day and in the evening so I have it on dimmer in the daytime and obviously brighter in the evenings which just means that I can see really easily what I'm doing in at any time of the day. So if you're interested in finding out more about the Serious Lights range then I'll leave a link in the description box below and if you were to decide to purchase high definition light you can use my offer code which is SR512 and that will give you £100 off a high definition light and also free delivery. So thank you so much to Serious Readers for sponsoring today's video. Now let's find out what my dad thought of the exhibition. Right dad. <laughs> What did you think of that? Did you enjoy that trip? <laughs> well, it was it was interesting. It's, yeah, it's it's a nice place to go to anyway. Yeah, it is. The artwork there is really yeah. nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, yeah. The quilt a bit funny though. Yeah. Well, it was a, it was an interesting ex exhibition because it was part quilt, part artwork based on patchwork, wasn't it? Yeah, that was strange. Really, somebody painting over it or yeah, painting a pretend quilt. Yeah, that that's what it was. Had he sewn some bits together? Pardon? Had he sewn some of the patches together? I think so, and then just put some paint on top of it. Yeah. yeah. You weren't impressed with the back of one of them, though, were you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You definitely need another piece of fabric on the back, don't you? Otherwise, it, it looks a bit messy. Yeah, <laughs> it's unfinished, really, isn't yeah. it, if it's just one one piece? Um yeah. So, so what have you learned about 
about quilts from... Well, it looks like there. it's lots of bits of fabric and you just stitch them together. Really. <laughs> that is ex essentially what it is, yeah. yeah. But it's de deciding the shape of the fabric mm -hmm. and if there's going to be a pattern or whatever, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You need some sort of project, really, to have a go at it. Yeah. You need to pick a design, don't you? Yeah. Some type of design and have a go at it. Mm, well, I asked the viewers and I asked people on Instagram to give us some suggestions All for right. designs that they thought would be really good for a beginner. So thank you to everyone who engaged with that and sent us some suggestions. So I'm going to read them out to you and see what you think <laughs> of them. And there was also lots of lovely messages about that's like, for example, things like this. That's absolutely awesome, Emma. What a fantastic dad. So there was a lot of people saying things like that as well, which is just really nice. Um, so there was Irish Chain. It's Irish Chain. It's one of the last ones in the exhibition where it, the, the red and white blocks where they sort of went in diagonal, right, okay. a diagonal pattern. But essentially it's just squares joined together and it's, into bigger squares and then it's how you lay them out. It ends up looking like a cross shape. Okay. Log cabin. Log. There was a log cabin there, wasn't it? Yeah. That, well, you said it was a log cabin. Yeah. But I couldn't see a log cabin. <laughs> <laughs> I think because of all the, the little strips that sort of work their way around the square, I think that's why it's called log cabin. Okay. I'm sure someone will let us know in the comments, <laughs> maybe a bit more about the origin of that design. But yeah, it's another really traditional one. Did you like that one? Um, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. it could be a, an easy one. Yeah, it depends on how small the strips are and you can have a lot of them, couldn't you? Yeah, there could be thousands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, let's see what other suggestions we got. Lone Star. No, don't know. you don't know what a lone star is. It it's making me think it's something to do with like triangles made into a star shape. Diamonds. 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 Yeah, that's a good example of of a wow. lone star. Um, but yeah, lots of diamonds that you put together to make. Oh right, the yeah. Diamonds. That's an interesting one. Yeah, it's complicated. I think diamonds are tricky. Yeah, it looks tricky. Personally. Um, Churn dash. What do you think a churn dash quilt would be? Churn. Like? What sort of churn? A churn, something you mix things up in. Yeah, it? like a milk churn. Yeah. Yeah. So what's a churn dash? <laughs> um, it's that design, and obviously lots of them put together. Does it look like a churn to you? <laughs> uh, not exactly. No. <laughs> yeah. But so straight pieces and triangles, isn't it? Yes. Do you know what those sort of triangles are called? Is that the half something or other? The half. Half. Half yard? No. Half square. Yeah. Half, half square. square triangle. He's been doing some research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Um, well done. 10 out of 10 for that. Um, a rag quilt. Um, mainly it's people saying log cabin. Disappearing nine patch. Yeah, this one this one's fun. It you make a nine patch at, like these and then you cut them up and sew them back together again in another order. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like cutting everything up, sewing it together, cutting the same things up again and sewing them together again. So there's okay. a lot there's a lot involved in that, but it can look quite cool. Again, simple patchwork squares, um, yeah, lone stars, uh, log cabin, log cabin, nine patch. Okay, so Log Cabin and Nine Patch, they were like the two that everybody was suggesting. They were the real popular ones. Right. Um, and I think they're both good for beginners. So if we did the Log Cabin, it would just be a, a square, a Log Cabin yeah, square. Yeah, we'll do let's, a test. Yeah, let's have a go with that. All yeah. right, then let's make a one Log Cabin block, see how you find it, yeah. and then we'll take Stop it from there. Stop what you call a square, a block. A block, yeah. yeah. And then okay. quilts are made up of blocks all put together. Okay. So we'll do one block and then see how you get on. And then, uh, yeah, okay? Yeah. Let's get sewing. So we 
started by preparing our fabrics. We chose six different fabrics and Dad pressed them and then he is cutting them into one inch strips. So he's making a log cabin block and essentially we're starting with a one and a half inch square in the center and then around the edge we just keep adding strips and trimming them off and we just keep working our way around the block like so. So you can see here is the central square which is the red piece of fabric and then we've laid the one inch strip across one side of that and we're just going to stitch along from one side to the other and then trim off the excess afterwards. And we just did a quick check of the quarter inch seam and I would say that is pretty good for a first time. Well done dad. Once the excess has been trimmed off, it's time to press the seam to set the seam and then Dad already knew about pressing to the dark side because he'd done a bit of research so I was really impressed. So that's what he's doing, he's pressing his seams to one side and he's pressing them in the direction of the darker fabric. Depending on what you're doing, um You get the pattern, the pattern is the right way up there, mm. but when you're looking at it, it's going to be upside down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's when you end up putting more thought into what uh, you're making uh, and yeah. how you're cutting it. And with with scraps, we're just going through the motions of, you know, how you construct the block. But if you wanted to make it look good, yeah, you'd have to think about that. So would I do that? No, no, no. I'll have to go to the next bit then. So put your piece down, flat, opened out. Flat, opened out. Yeah. And then you're going to put, yeah, but you, you want to line, that's it. That's right. Like that. And so exactly the same as before. So all the way But down. I'm showing to, on there as well. Yes, that's right. So once he'd sewn down there, again, the same process, trim off the excess, press the seam to set the seam and then press the fabric to the dark side. And it's just a case of repeating these steps as you go around your square. It's interesting how it all forms together. It's it's more interesting than I, thought, than I thought the log cabin was going to be, you know. Oh, good. So, um, on this next one. Yeah. Is it okay for me to cut some of that off? Yes. Because I want to try and get the cat a little bit in. You want to try and get the cat in? A little bit. Yeah, I think that's definitely... So, but, oops. So, let's just. Trouble is, I've got to get that straight, haven't I? I really liked how Dad was starting to think about fabric placement and what part of the design to include. And although we did chop the ears of the poor little cat off in the end, he is really starting to think like a quilter when he's creating his block and it was just so nice to see. So what do you think, Dad? You've, yeah. You've, there's definitely room for improvement. <laughs> oh, I think you've done really well. It's really good. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Not as good as, a, as it should be, but... Oh, I think it's really good. It's a bit rustic. <laughs> Rust, it's a rustic cabin. <laughs>
So do you think you could make a whole quilt out of those? Uh, I could make a small quilt, but um, I think I may have some other ideas. Oh, really? Yeah. That, that's exciting. Well, we'll save those ideas for another video, maybe. Yep. Yep. Okay, then. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>